Hey. Turn that off for right now until I get to the front of the camera. Sorry, I'm a little late. I'm trying to get ready. I have one more day before I go back to New York. So, just packing and things. So I am going to um, do a few math problems and then I will come back on and um, yeah, so I can separate the two so I can put one on my YouTube channel. Um, so I'm gonna do a few math problems and then I will come back on and talk to you guys for, for a little bit. I have a busy day today since I am, this is my last day in Nashville. Okay, I am going to pun front camera I remember I can't see your comments, but I have to have it on front camera so it won't be reversed. Not a few. Uh, I decided that I was going to do a few and then I have like a couple too. Um, so the first one I'm going to do is um, factoring the greatest common um, factor but with um, variables. So if we have something like this, ax plus xy plus x squared. First of all, we can't factor that because this has an a and nothing else does. So you can't factor it into two binomials. So the first thing you wanna do, even when you're just factoring, is you always wanna check to see if they have a greatest common factor. Um, even before you start factoring into two binomials, you always check to see if they have a greatest common factor first. So in this case, I say, what do all three of these terms have in common? AX, XY, and X squared. You notice they all have an X. So I can take out an X. And then I say, what's left in the parentheses? Well, here I have an AX, but I took out an X. So that just leaves me with an A. Here I have an XY, but I took out an X, so that just leaves me with a Y. And then here I have an X squared, which means I have two X's. I only took out one X, so that just leaves me with one X there. Because I only took out one X, so two X's becomes just one X. And that is how you factor that with um, doing the greatest common factor. And that's how you would do all of those. Um, you would just look for what they all have in common. Now this one, these right here that I'm about to do, I actually have a video up on my YouTube channel and if you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, you should because I'm going to finish today videos and all of pre-algebra, all of pre-algebra and I like research different schools and everything. So it's a lot of concepts. Some of the concepts your school might not even go over because um, I researched but I put them all in there. And um, and then some of pre-algebra overlaps with algebra, so I started even in algebra. I have a ton of algebra concepts already up there as well. And my next goal is to finish algebra after I finish pre-algebra. So this one, what number is 45% of 60? Again, this is a percent proportion that I've taught. I think my niece was actually on this video. Is over of equals percent over 100. Bogo wants up here, we'll put them up there. Equals percent over 100. So I'm gonna diagram the sentence and I look for the word is, I look for the word of, and I look for the percent sign. If it has a percent sign, it automatically goes where this percent um, sign is, okay? And then I say the word is, and there's not a number beside is except for the 45, but that's the percent because it trumps it. If it has a percent sign, it automatically goes there. And here's the word of, and it is by 60, because it says of 60. So this 60 represents of. So we're gonna put it in the proportion. We know our of is 60. We know the percent is 45, which means that we're looking for the is. Okay, which means that we're looking for the is. And then you just, um, you multiply, you solve this by multiplying these and dividing. I don't have my calculator, so I'm gonna do it by hand right now. Um, let's hope I don't make a mistake. 24, 25, 26, 27. Um, so 2700 equals 100x divided by 100. So x is going to equal 27 when we solve that proportion. Remember when we solve proportions, we do the butterfly method, 60 times 45, and then 100 times x, and then divide by 100. 
So that's how you do these type of problems. Uh, is over of equals percent over 100. And again, that's called um, percent proportion. And so you can go and watch that video. This next one, I also have a video of. It deals with order of operations. So six times three plus two in parentheses divided by two. And order of operations, PEMDAS, I show you this in my video. I write a pyramid because multiplication and division are on the same level. You don't do multiplication before division, okay? Um, it's multiplication and division from left to right. And if you see these things on Facebook or Instagram, it's funny to read these comments because a lot of people get these problems wrong and a lot of adults. So P stands for parentheses. So we look in the parentheses and we have more than one operation in the parentheses. So within the parentheses, you have to apply order of operations. So addition or exponents comes first. We notice exponents comes first, so that's what we have to do. We have to do two squared first, which is four. And I'm just gonna rewrite the problem again. I always like to underline what operation I do and then I rewrite it. So we still have parentheses, so we wanna do that. And there's only one operation now, three plus four is seven, divided by two. And then we have multiplication and division. And we look at it, they are on the same level. So that means we need to do it from left to right. So we're gonna do multiplication first, because that's the first one that we see when left to right. And then we have 42 divided by two, which is 21. And that's how you do order of operations. Believe me, a lot of adults might get that wrong. Um, okay, two more problems. So this one's a ratio problem. It says a ratio of blue beads to red beads is three to four. So I'm gonna write that. So that's blue beads to red beads is three to four. And a ratio of blue beads to green beads is five to one. So blue to green. They tell me that we have 20 red um, beads, 20 red beads, and we wanna know how many green beads? Okay, so in this case, if they give us 20 red beads, the only ratio we have with red is blue. But then you notice that blue's in this ratio for green. So we're gonna have to do solve two ratios. First of all, we need to know how many blue because we can't figure out how many green yet because we don't know how many blue and that's the ratio they give us for the green. So to figure out that ratio, we're gonna use the ratio they give us three blue to four red, and then they give us 20 red. So 20 will go down on bottom because if red's on bottom here, red has to go on bottom here. And then we're gonna solve that proportion. 20, again, we saw the proportion butterfly method. 20 times three is 60. And then four times X is four X. So X is going to equal um, 15 and that represents the blue. Okay, so that represents the blue. So now we know we have 15 blue marble um, beads, not marbles, 15 blue beads. So now I'm gonna rewrite that because that's what we need to know, 15 blue beads. So now we're going to use the other one, five over one, that's blue and green. And we know we have 15 blue, so that goes on top and we're looking for green. We do the same thing, 15 times one is 15. 5 times x is 5x, divide them both by 5, divide them both by 5, x equals 3. So we have three green mar um, beads. I don't know why I want to say marbles. Three green beads. Okay, the last thing I'm going to do is quadratics, and I'm going to sol show you solving by the quadratic equation because I actually have a video on factoring quadratics. So it's called factoring trinomials. Um, and so go and watch that. And then I am going to make videos on how to factor by grouping and things like that. Those are all in algebra. But I decided that I wanted to do the quadratic equation today. So the quadratic equation I have memorized. Um, you probably will too if you always use it, but it's negative B plus or minus B squared, the square root of B squared minus four AC all over two A. It's just a formula, don't get freaked out, okay? because we know quadratics are written in this form, a squared plus bx plus c. So 
whatever's in the A position is the A, whatever's in the B position is the B, whatever's in the C position is the C. So if I had a quadratic, x squared plus 2x minus 8 equals 0, and I wanted to solve this with using the quadratic equation and not factoring, all I need to do is identify the A, B, and C. So the A is, um, oh, whoops, it's not A squared, it's A x squared, sorry, they're in this form, A x squared plus B x plus C, sorry about that. Um, so it's whatever the coefficient is in front of the x. Well, we don't have a coefficient here, um, so we always understand that it's one when it's not there. If there's not a coefficient in front of a variable, it's always one. So A is one, B is two, because it's the coefficient in front of the x, and then C is negative eight. And the reason it's negative eight, because if you notice in the form, it's plus C, so um, since this is not a plus, if we were to write it as a plus, plus negative eight, it would be negative eight, okay? So now we've identified A, B, and C, and all we have to do is plug it into the formula. So I'm gonna do that. So the opposite of B, which is the opposite of two, plus or minus the square root of B squared, two squared, minus four times A, which is one, times C, which is negative eight, all over two times one. So here we have our um, formula. Now I'm just gonna simplify it using order of operations. I'm gonna simplify what's in the um, square root first. We know four squared is four, and then four times one is four. Four times a negative eight is a um, negative 32. So we have four minus negative 32. And then we apply our integer rules. If you don't know those, I have a video on those too. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so we apply our integer rules, which is add the opposite. 4 plus 32, which is 36. So we get negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 36 all over 2 times a, which is 2 times 1, which is just 2. I'm going to continue to simplify because I can simplify the square root of 36. So negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 36 is 6 divided by 2. And now I just have two answers because we have the plus or minus. So I'm gonna do it the first way. Negative two plus six is four, and then four divided by two is two. So that's one of my answers. Now I'm gonna do the minus part way. Negative two minus six is negative eight. Negative eight divided by two is negative four. So those are my two answers, two and negative four. Um, and so let's say that you had something here that was 41 or something, let's say you had 41 and you couldn't do it. Your teacher could actually want you, well, might want you to keep it in this form. I mean, here we can do two divided by two, which is negative one, so we can even simplify that anymore, every more. And we have, we could have um, negative one plus or minus the square root of 41. Sometimes your teacher might want you to do the decimals and round to the nearest tenths, but I let my kids keep it in that form as well. So there you have it. That is a little math lesson. And again, I hope to do these, since I'm doing my YouTube channel and making videos already, um, I hope to do, instead of teaching a tutorial, I hope to actually answer your questions. And so please send them to me. You can send them to me all the time. Um, and I take pictures of them. And then the next time I do like an Ask Jess Lane type of thing, hopefully once a week, um, I will answer your questions. Thank you. I will. Okay. Awesome. So I am going to, uh, I'm going to officially, sorry, I paused it on accident. I'm going to officially like hang up from you guys so I can save this um, and put it on my YouTube channel under like, helping with math problems, but I will talk to you in like one minute.